We're coming to you on the sidelines of uh, the local content conference happening here at the Serena Conference Center. And uh, what's been happening today is uh, local content providers, as you'll be establishing in the oil and gas industry and the happenings therein, are here putting minds together to see how they can be involved in this. Uh, let's now talk to Patrick Moheire. Patrick is the chief executive of Stanbic Bank, the people that have organized this. Good morning. Good morning. Steve is good morning. Yes. How are you? <laughs> good, thank you. Yes. Uh, so tell me, you're targeting local content providers to be involved in this. Uh, what kind of people are you looking at? So this is the fourth time we've had this local content conference mm. and the idea is that we want to identify or share the mm. opportunity mm. with our local providers. We believe that local content is a key enabler in economic growth for us. Mm. Um, the government has put the policy in place, mm. there's political will, but where is the private sector? How are they mm. going to take a piece of this $10 billion of spend that's coming over the next three to five years? And there's been a huge obsession about First Oil, but I don't think we've moved quick enough to identify and really harness the opportunity that's staring us in the face at the moment. Whenever we talk about local, you know, local companies, farms, etc., etc., the question that rises is, do we have what it takes? Uh, we want to be involved, but sometimes the complaints are, you know, competence, skills, etc., etc. Does Uganda, as of now, have that which we require, the, the right standards especially? Yes, I mean, I think that that's a very poor excuse, that we don't have the capacity. Um, we may not have 99 or 100% capacity, but certainly we cannot live with a 6% local capacity, a local content that we saw in Karuma and Isimba. Mm. That's unacceptable. Uh, we need to do more. We need to get a bigger piece of this pie. So out of the 10 billion, if we can get to a 35% uh, local mm. content, I would be very pleased, because that's a big number. 3 billion mm. filtering down to our local corporates. Imagine the capacity that creates, the employment it brings, the know-how. And at the end of the day, we may not be as familiar with oil and gas, but it's happening in Angola, in Mozambique, in Nigeria. There are lots of brothers out there who can teach us. So let's get out, let's get the partnerships and bring the local content, or the know-how and technical know-how locally. Do you see the willingness from uh, some of these big players that are involved in this to tell, tell all? Because you see, oftentimes the complaint has been that uh, they you know, in many ways push away the Ugandans and uh, really get them to, I don't know, you do the serving of food, etc., mm. etc., but then the big positions, those are filled by people from elsewhere. Do we see that internally? Yeah, I think you saw a very good presentation this morning from uh, Total uh, on behalf of the joint venture partners showing where the opportunities are. They've been very, very transparent in sharing. The reality is, is that oil companies have standards. Anytime you're dealing with a commodity like this, there are some global standards. And all they're saying is that in particular areas, we're not going to lower our standards. Ugandans have to come up to those standards to serve them. And they've shown the areas where Ugandans can play immediately because the standards are not so high. Security, food catering, there are certain things that have a very, very low point of entry. Then when you get to hazardous waste material handling, that requires, you know, that's not something you take so lightly. So I think they're right in requesting that the Ugandans lift up their standards to play in certain areas. Certain areas, not so, not so big deal. But at the end of the day, Ugandans need to step up and get ready to play. What are the other, the, the other service provisions, if you like, that we are talking about here for somebody that's watching? You've talked about food, you've talked about security. Transport, what else can people tap into? Transport is a big thing. You can imagine mm. they'll be moving hundreds of thousands of tons between Tanga and Hoima. Trucks will be key. Um, there is, they will need a lot of material to build the roads, uh, to supply the pipeline, pipes, catering, um, you know, road gravel material, construction, maintenance. Um, there's lots of things. I mean, we shared today about 27 subsectors of things that people could be doing. This might not be a question for you to answer, but um, clearly as somebody here, uh, the concern again from several people is that, you see, we'll invest capital into all this and then there will be delays. There has been delays with the oil and gas industry and so some folks feel we shall, you know, put in money and wait to do work and uh, that will not quite happen and there will be delays and uh, yeah. it, it clearly does not make the cut for them. I mean, the delays were unfortunate. They, you know, but to, to be honest, we are now on the cusp of moving. Are we? Uh, we launched the feed, which is a front engineering um, design concept just last week. So there's a lot of work being done in how the oil is going to move where pipelines are going to sit, the central processing facility, that's going to be delivered at the end of this year. The next big step will be what's called the final investment decision, which will happen either at the end of this year or early next year. And that is when the oil uh, venture partners will be signing 
uh, the details, the nine billion, nine to ten billion they're going to be spending. And then we get into the construction of the pipeline. Things are moving. Um, I don't think there's any other delay, to be honest. Mm. The other challenge that we tend to have is sustainability, because this is going to be for about, what, three to four years? And uh, then what happened? Somebody has been involved in this, and they've been earning quite a bit, and then all of a sudden this comes to a close. Then what? What it's advice do you give to them? It's not a four-year project. This is a 25-year project, right? We're going to be producing oil for the next 25 years. Yes, there's going to be a bit of a ramp up on certain things for the next four to five years, because as you can imagine, once we turn on the tap and the oil starts moving to Tanga, that's it, really. There won't be as much construction. There won't be as many people working in the fields. Mm. So there's a ramp-up period, but very much this is a project that will last till you know, 25 years from now. So you can play and invest appropriately. But even within the four years or the four to five years, if you invest wisely, you can generate a phenomenal return for the five years and then go back into some of the more basic stuff. I mean, there will be lots of chemicals that will need to be supplied. Pipeline will need to be cleaned annually there will be maintenance along the pipeline there will be maintenance in the processing facility so you can be wise about where you play for the 25 years and where you invest intensely for the next four mm -hmm. and all the information is available finally uh Sandvik is clearly involved in this uh away from such a conference how else are you involved so we like i said we've been doing this for four years mm -hmm. um we are the leading bank in the country uh we're fortunate to be owned by a group that has 20 other african countries presence and so we've seen this movie before. We've seen it in Angola and Nigeria. We've been a part of all this mm -hmm. uh, in Ghana. So what we're trying to do is to play that role, to connect the dots, um, bring in best practices. We've had a number of uh, opportunities for Ugandans to go out and see what we've done in other countries. And, you know, as a leading bank, we, we're very fortunate that we can play this role. Patrick Mohere, thank you for talking to us. Thanks a lot.